All right, we're going to be looking at our video on digestion. And digestion is very important because, well, we all love to eat. And digestion is the process that takes that food that we eat, all those big chunks of food. We chew it, makes it into smaller pieces, and eventually we have to be able to suck the nutrition out of it. And our digestive system has all the bits and pieces to help to make sure that the nutrition from the food actually reaches our cells and muscles, okay, and so that we can produce energy. Uh, so let's go through this. So you can try this as a warm up just to try to draw the digestive system. You know the main pieces, but do you remember how they all fit together? You can pause right here and see what's going on. Okay, moving on. You'll receive a diagram, or you can find a simple unlabeled diagram on Google Images. Just type in digestive system unlabeled diagram. You'll get something that looks like this, and then try to label all the main pieces. You should be able to name uh, the majority of these things. Teeth, mouth, tongue, uh, salivary glands are producing your saliva. Uh, we'll go into each of these bits a little bit more. The pharynx, esophagus this is his main tube, not to be confused with the trachea. Trachea is going to go and branch into the bronchi, into the lungs, but that's the respiratory system and not the digestive system. Um, we've got the stomach, of course, most famous gallbladder, the pancreas, really important. Liver is the largest organ in the body, so usually you draw that right in the middle of the uh, thorax of the human, and then you can kind of figure out where everything else kind of fits in. You've heard of the small intestines, of course, the large intestines, the appendix, and the disease that goes along with that is appendicitis, a condition that affects many, many people. Uh, the rectum, and the final passageway through which food that hasn't been uh, fully digested passes through the anus. Okay, basically, why do we need digestion? Uh, we need digestion because we can't survive on just, we're not, we're not plants, so I can't go out to the beach and photosynthesize and produce uh, all my own sugars and glucose just using carbon dioxide. So I actually have to consume things in order to stay alive. Um, some things I'm able to restructure within my cells, like uh, some of the amino acids I can make uh, on my own, some vitamins we can produce, for example, but uh, most of the things, pr the proteins, the carbohydrates, and the lipids we need to survive have to come from eating other things, be it animals or plants. Um, one, more th one more thing here. Food we eat contains substances made by other organisms. Uh, they're not directly suitable for human tissue, so we need to re reassemble them. So, for example, I need protein, right? So when I bite into a chicken uh, leg and chew up all the meat, well, I, I, that, that protein in that chicken leg is not, I can't just directly insert that into my muscles and replace my protein there. It, ours is, is, is unique, just like any other organism. So we need to break down their chicken meat into uh, the individual polypeptides or individual amino acids, and then we will reassemble them into something that actually works for our body. Essential AAs, that stands for essential amino acids. These are things that we have to eat in order to make the proteins. Uh, legumes are a good source of these essential amino acids. We call them essential because we have to eat them and we can't make them, like I said earlier. We also need digestion because in order to get these little molecules into our bloodstream to be transported to other cells, um, they need to be small enough to be absorbed uh, in the small intestine. We're going to look at the small intestine, in particular the villi, uh, very carefully um, a little bit later. Here's a very childish picture showing the basics of all this. And this is the area down here, the small intestine. If you zoom in, you look at the walls of the small intestine, they're very uh, high in surface. Uh, surface area to volume ratio and that just increases its ability to absorb some of these small molecules that are broken down. We'll see that later. So same diagram we saw earlier. Um, think of the digestive system as one long tube. It's called the alimentary canal. So basically it's one straight path where food will pass through here. Uh, things will start disappearing and going into the bloodstream at various stages of this to so be broken down into smaller pieces. The things that our body does not use in the end uh, will pass out through the anus. So 
the liver, very, very important here. The liver is a storage place for extra glucose. Um, you've heard of diseases like diabetes or hypoglycemia uh, or hyperglycemia, which basically refers to excessively high or low amounts of glucose in the bloodstream. This is an example of homeostasis. We need to keep the level of glucose that's going through our blood relatively uh, constant. So in other words, it can't go too high or too low or we start to get a lot of problems. And so uh, the pancreas, what is that? The pancreas plays a role, the brain plays a role, but basically all that fits together to keep the blood glucose within very narrow limits. And if there's extra glucose, then it actually gets sent to the liver and it gets stored as glycogen. Okay, later you're going to see another word, a hormone called glucagon. Uh, they're easily confused because of the way they sound, so be careful with that. Glucose is converted to and stored as glycogen in the liver. The pancreas produces some important enzymes. We've talked about enzymes a lot. Uh, amylases will break down carbohydrates. Lipases will break down lipids. And if you should, you should remember that carbohydrates get broken down into disaccharides and monosaccharides. And lipases get broken down into glycerol and fatty acids. The gallbladder, this arrow is pointing to the gallbladder here. The gallbladder is very important. It produces something called bile. Okay, bile is produced by the liver and stored here. And the problem with fats is that, as you know, if you put oil into water, oil and water doesn't mix, right? Oil is hydrophobic, water is hydrophilic. So when you eat a lot of fatty foods, now you need fats in order to stay alive because you have fats in your body for insulation, for your nerve cells and many other functions. Um, what is happening? in order to aid in the digestion of fats, because most of this in here is primarily a water-based system, okay? So there's gonna be a lot of water in your digestive system. If you have these big chunks of fat that are just being pushed away from the water because they're hydrophobic, it's gonna make it very difficult for these lipases to act upon them. So bile helps out by breaking big chunks of fat into smaller fat droplets, a process called emulsification, or we can say emulsified fats. If they're smaller, then this takes us back to the understanding of surface area. If they're smaller, then there's more surface area and the lipases can more easily act on these smaller drops of fat and actually break them down into glycerol and fatty acids. If you go back and review the higher level unit on enzymes, we used lipase as an, as an example. It's a pretty funky looking enzyme that's pretty cleverly constructed in such a way that it allows lipase to mix with water and at the same time uh, has a little kind of a, a cap that allows it to connect with lipases that are hydrophobic. Here's a close-up diagram of some of the connections that are going on. This has come up in a previous uh, question. Here's a simpler diagrammatic form of the whole process and the connections here. So take a look closely at that and make sure you get that into your notes. So these things are emptying their products into the intestines. Enzymes made here. Glucose that may be getting released from the liver down here. The gallbladder producing its bile shares a duct shares a duct with the liver. So you can see how that all empties this direction down into the intestines. Okay, to end off this video, take a look at these two practice questions. You should pause the video at this point. Okay, did you get the right answer? Figure out why. One more practice question. Pause the video here to think about it. Okay, there's the correct answer. See if you could figure out why. All right, we'll stop there.